Hello students, in this video I am going to teach you a very simple method to find the value of any trigonometric functions. May it be larger values or the smaller values. With this method you will be very easily able to find the values of any trigonometric functions. Okay, so let's start. So sine 31 pi by 3. So sine 31 pi by 3 I can also write it as sine 31 into 180 divided by 3. Pi is 180. So 31 into 180 divided by 3 is 1860. So now you need to divide this number by 90. Basically the numbers which are associated with the trigonometric functions that we need to divide it by 90. So when we divide the number by 90 we get 90 into 20 90 times 20 is 1800 and the remainder is 60 and the remainder we always get the table values for example a 0 degree 30 degree 45 degree 60 degree we only get those values here so now sine 1860 we can also write it as sine 90 into 20 plus 60 that is 90 into 20 plus 60 that is 90 into 20 plus 60 it gives you 1860 itself sine 1860 i have split into 90 into 20 plus 60 so here 20 represents the quadrant okay this is the 20th quadrant and as soon as you add something in the 20th quadrant you jump into the 21st quadrant and suppose if there was a minus sign here you would remain in the 20th quadrant itself but as you are adding something to the 20th quadrant you will jump into the 21st quadrant now where is the 21st quadrant let us find out see here this is the first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant fourth quadrant 5th quadrant 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 and 21. So here you are here now. In the first in the 21st quadrant all the trigonometric functions are positive. So you get the positive sign here. Next you come back to the same 20. See here now if you have a even number then the trigonometric functions will remain as it is. The sine will remain sine. Suppose if you had the odd number here, the sine will convert to cos. Suppose if you have the odd number here, the sine will convert to cos, the tan will convert to cot and sec will convert to cosec. But as you are having the even number here, the sine will remain sine itself. So that will be plus sine and 60. So sine 60 degree is root 3 by 2. That's all. Very simple, isn't it? So let's see the next example. Example 8. Find the value of cos minus 1710. Cos minus 1710 can also be written as cos 1710 because cos minus theta is equals to cos theta. So cos 1710, what we need to do here? We need to divide this number by 90. We always divide the we always divide the given number by 90. So when we divide the given number by 90, we get the quotient as 19 and 0 as remainder. So how can we write this? How can we write 1710? We can write it as 90 into 19 plus 0. That is 19 into 90 90 into 19 plus 0. So now this is the 19th quadrant. 19th quadrant and we, when we add something in the 19th quadrant we jump into the 20th quadrant so let us find out where where the 20th quadrant is so in the first quadrant second quadrant third fourth fifth six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty so we are here in the 20th quadrant so this is the 20th quadrant and in the 20th quadrant cos and sec is positive so as the cos is positive we get the positive sign here and coming back to the same 19, the 19 is the odd number and as I told you the 19 whenever you have an odd number the trigonometric function will change. Trigonometric function will change from sine to cos, tan to cot, sec to cosec and vice versa. So here as we have the odd number the cos will change into sine and we write the 0 here. So sine 0 is nothing but 0. Next. Next question number 6 of exercise 3.2 find the value of sine 765. So sine 765, 765 we need to divide it by 90. So we divide 765 by 90. So 90 into 8 gives you 720 that will be 45. 
So now we can split the 765 as 90 into 8 plus 45. That is 90 into 8 plus 45. Now coming to this number, this is the 8th quadrant. And when we add something in the 8th quadrant, we, we jump into the 9th quadrant. So let us see where is the 9th quadrant. So the first quadrant, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine. So, so this is the ninth quadrant, and the ninth quadrant, all the trigonometric functions are positive. So we get the positive sign here. And coming back to the same eight, the eight is the even number. So when we have the even number, the trigonometric functions won't change. The sign will remain sine itself. So sine 45. So plus sine 45 is equals to 1 by root 2. Next question number 7 of exercise 3.2. Find the value of cosec minus 1410. So cosec minus 1410 can also be written as minus cosec 1410. So what we do with 1410? We divide it by 90. We divide it by 90 and what we get is the quotient we get as 15 and 60 we get as remainder. So what we do? We write 90 into 15 plus 60, that is 19 into 15 plus 60. So first we write negative sign here, then coming back to the quadrant, that is 15. 15 and we add something to the 15 quadrant, we'll jump into 16 quadrant, isn't it? So that's why 16 quadrant is the first quadrant, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. In the 16th quadrant, here in the 16th quadrant, only cos and sec is positive. So here cosec is negative. So we get another negative sign here. And coming back to the same 15, 15 is the odd number. And when, uh, when we have an odd number, the cosec will change into sec. The trigonometric functions will change. So minus sec 60, that will be minus minus it get cancelled. And sec, uh, sec 60 is 2. Next. So now question number 8. Uh, now students, I want you to pause the screen for a while and I want you to solve the, uh, this question on your own. I know you can do it now. Okay, and now uh, find the answer and cross check with my answer after solving. Okay, so let me proceed with the solution. So tan 19 pi by 3, tan 19 pi by 3, you can also write it as 19 into 180 divided by 3. So 19 into 180 divided by 3 will be 1140. So 1140, I need to divide it by 90. When I divide 1140 by 90, I get 12 as quotient and 60 remainder. And I write 1140 as 90 into 12 plus 60. So now, this is the 12th quadrant. 12th quadrant and I add something in this. So I will go to the 13th quadrant. So let me find out the 13th quadrant. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, 13. This is the quadrant. So in this quadrant, all the trigonometric functions are positive. So I get the positive sign here. Then coming back to the same 12, 12 is the even number. So in the even number, the trigonometric function will remain as it is. Tan will remain tan and 60. So tan 60 is root 3. Next question number 9. I really hope you have found the correct answer for the previous problem. Even in this question, you can pause the screen and you can try solving on your own. And you can cross check the answer later. Okay, so sine minus 11 pi by 3. Or you can take out the minus sign outside. Sine 11 into 180 divided by 3. That will be minus sine 660 degrees. So 660 we divided by 90. We get the, remain, we get the quotient 7, remainder 30. So what we do is 90 into 7 plus 30. So minus sign 90 into 7 plus 30. Uh, so this is the 7th quadrant. 7th quadrant and when we add something in the 7th quadrant, we will move into the 8th quadrant. So 8th quadrant. Where is the 8th quadrant? 1st quadrant, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th. So here we are in the 8th quadrant. In the 8th quadrant, Sine is negative. Only cos and sec is positive in the fourth quadrant. So the sign will be negative. First we have the negative uh, minus sign of this. Then here we have sine negative. So we have another minus here. And coming back to the 7. 7 is the odd number. In the odd number the trigonometric functions will change from sine to 
cos. So cos 30 degree. Here minus minus get cancelled. Cos 30 degree will be root 3 by 2. Question number 10. Find the value of cot minus 15 pi by 4. Cot minus 15 pi by 4. We can also write it as we can take the minus outside and cot 15 into 180 divided by 4. That will give us 15 into 180 divided by 4 will be 675. So 675 we have to divide it by 90. So when we divide it by 90 we get the quotient 7 and remainder 45. So we can write 675 as 90 into 7 plus 45. So here it is. 90 into 7 plus 45 and now this is the 7th quadrant. 7th quadrant we are adding something in the 7th quadrant so we will be in 8th quadrant. So let us see where the 8th quadrant is. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So in 8th quadrant only cos and sec is positive. The cot is negative here. So this minus I have it here and the cot is negative in the 8th quadrant that is we have it here and coming back to the same 7, 7 is the odd number so cot will change into tan. So tan 45, the minus minus here, the both negative get cancelled and tan 45 is nothing but 1. Okay students that's all for uh, that's all in this video. If you have any questions please ask me in comments. I'll be very happy to answer it. Thank you.